Hello, and thank you for joining as we discuss the Crosslink Business Module. Today, we're going to walk through a return as we evaluate how Crosslink facilitates the completion of 1120S returns by using proven and efficient methods. As we begin our demonstration today, first of all, it's important to note that Crosslink Business is integrated into the already established Crosslink 1040 platform. A similar methodology will be used for creating and processing a return. Today we're going to walk through that process, client data to transmit. And finally, we'll examine how Crosslink Business uses proven functionalities to give users various and efficient ways of completing the tax return. Now, Crosslink has been relied upon by tax professionals for decades. Crosslink Business is directly integrated with the Crosslink 1040 platform and is ready to be a productive part of your office's software far into the future. Now, with that integration, users will recognize the same efficient and intuitive methodology used within the Crosslink 1040 software. And along those same lines, preparers can utilize many of the same signature features of that 1040 software, including the digital signature pad, document archive, point and shoot error correction, and many more. Currently, the entities supported by the Crosslink business package are Form 1065 for partnership returns. Form 1120 for corporation returns. And Form 1120S for S corporation returns, just like we're going to be covering today. For completing returns in Crosslink Business, a simple and familiar process is recommended. First, we'll complete our client data screen to enter basic information about our client. Then we'll move to the income statement and balance sheet where the initial financial information will be input. After completing our financial statements, we'll add and complete any additional forms or schedules required. Afterwards, we'll simply verify for accuracy. Then we'll print or archive the documents required for both you and your client, and then of course transmit the return to the IRS. And with that, let's go ahead and move into the program. Now from our familiar work in progress screen, we're simply gonna click on the business returns link which is going to be in the tax return section. This will take us to our business return summary and please notice the similarities of this to your work in progress screen. From here, you can access existing returns, create new returns, or fix any rejected returns. To begin a new return, simply click on the add new button. We'll simply enter our EIN, confirm it, select our entity, and click OK. However, for today, for time purposes, I already have a return started, and we're going to access that return just like we would any other return. We're going to cancel from here, and we're going to select a return by clicking on Go and displaying our return list. From here, we can find the return that we're looking for with various search and sort options, and we'll double-click to open. This will open a new business tax return. Many of you will notice the screen layout parallels with the 1040 product. Users can utilize toolbars at the top of the screen for commonly completed tasks. The black information bar displays important information about the return. There's an attached form section that allows easy navigation from general, federal, and state forms. The active form, in this case the client data form, is displayed with color-coded fields. And an active window below conveniently gives information to various functionalities. So with that, let's take a look at this client data screen. We'll start at the top with some basic information about our business, such as the name, the partner responsible, contact information and title for that partner, and then we'll keep moving to the address section. Of course, we'll also include the zip code locator, and then we'll come to a section on business information where we'll look at the date that it was organized, or in this case, incorporated, where, and of course, the NAICS code, which is very similar to picking codes on your Schedule C in the 1040 software. Once again, we have our choice list, which can be accessed through our active window or by clicking on F3. After a few more basic pieces of information about the business, we can also select our accounting method and then look forward to four check boxes. First of all, we can force schedules L, M1, and M2. We've got an allocation and apportionment worksheet for tracking assets across various states. 
We can answer no to all the questions on the schedules for other information. And then our fourth option is to use tax information reported on the asset worksheets or our depreciation module to complete the balance sheet lines for those assets. Nice time-saving feature. And it's also important to note that depreciation takes place within the business module the same way that it does within the 1040 software. We've got some applicable boxes if anything is going to be different about this return, such as initial, final, or some type of change. We also include fields to collect information about bank routing and accounting numbers for payments or direct deposits. And of course, we're going to include the preparer information, and we're going to utilize a preparer database to make sure that we get this information into our return quickly and efficiently. One more section on our client data screen shows you that we can track referrals to see how our new business customers are hearing about us. Now, after going through this client data screen, let's take a second and scroll back up and notice the information entered. Client information at the top, basic info about the responsible partner and business itself, address of the firm, some information about the business, including when it was started, what it does, and its accounting method, some options to speed the process of this return, check boxes if anything is different, collecting bank information, paid prepare, and our referrals, all on a streamlined, efficient client data sheet. Once we enter information on this client data form, this information is going to flow throughout the return. So if I were to move to my 1120S, I can see that a lot of the general information at the top of this form is completed for me. Matter of fact, let's take just a second to look at the color coding because most of this is going to be dark gray. Dark gray is the default color and cross-link for a calculated field or a field where the information is coming from elsewhere. In this case, the client data sheet. And as you can see, looking through this 1120S, most of it is going to be calculated. Of course, we can still spot check for light blue fields, such as the S selection effective date or when did this company become an S Corp. And also, answering, is the corporation electing to become an S Corp beginning with this tax year? And like that, we can continue working on our 1120S return. Now that we've looked at this and we've completed our client data screen, it's time to start entering financial information. Now with all cross-linked business returns, most financial information will be entered on the income statements and balance sheet, allowing for a more streamlined and efficient data entry system. So first of all, let's start with the income statement. Before beginning the income statement, it is important to note that cross-link users will have the option of importing financial data from the most popular bookkeeping software. In order to begin this process, simply click the return menu and select import financial data. Now, assuming you'll be entering the information directly, let's go ahead and get started with this financial statement. We'll start by entering the gross receipts and any returns that may have occurred throughout the year. Please notice our same familiar color coding as our light blue or data entry fields and our calculated dark gray fields calculate as we enter information. And as we start moving down this income statement, you can see that there are various ways in order to collect income associated with this particular business. Also, in the case of ordinary interest, just to use it for an example, if we wanted to detail the interest that this company was bringing in, we could simply use Control w as a keyboard shortcut combination to display a worksheet in which we can detail that information. And as you can see, once entering this information here, our total will be moved up to line 3A. Once again, we've got another color coding to look at. This light yellow lets us know that that information is coming from a worksheet. As we scroll down, you can see various other incomes that can be entered on this particular form. But I do want to point out the section under line 8H. Other income or loss not recorded above. This is a miscellaneous area which allows you to list other types of income that may not be listed out in the previous lines. In addition to that, it also allows you to make sure that income reported on your income statement is also reported on the appropriate form. For example, if this particular S Corp owned a rental property, we would need to include that information on our 8825. Now, at the same time, if we're preparing an income statement, we want to make sure that all the income for this particular company is in the same location. So let's look at how we would do this. Enter a basic description, and the way that we'll do this is by utilizing the code section next to the description. Once again, we have choices, or we can press F3 on our keyboard. 
And besides the miscellaneous income that we can list, we can also list that this is a property with gross rentals reported on Form 8825. In order to do that, we'll simply select that code and then we'll list our amount, correctly adding this to our total income for the form and allowing us the convenience of entering all our income in one streamlined statement. As you can see here, we've got a self-calculating field that's going to be calculating as we work. Our total revenue for the year has been included, and we're moving to our expense section. Starting with expenses, we do include the cost of goods sold, and there's a calculated field on line 9D. The difference between opening and closing inventory is going to come from our balance sheet. After that, we've got some various other expenses that we could use our worksheets or just enter directly on our forms. As we continue to scroll down, it is important to note through the various expenses on here that the program will automatically keep the difference between tax and book income. For example, many of you realize that when it comes to meals and entertainment, we can only deduct 50% of that for tax purposes. So when we enter that our company spent 6000 on that, it will automatically say as far as our book income, 6000 was spent. But as far as our tax deduction, we're only going to be counting 3000 allowing users to simply enter the income directly on this income statement. You can see various other expenses, but I do want to point out this line 37. This is the other miscellaneous section to where we can also link expenses associated with our rental property from above. So in order to do that, I'll simply type in a description. And once again, the code is very important here. So by clicking on choices, I can see that for my 8825 property A, I have various expenses I can choose from. In this case, I'm going to select insurance, and then what I paid for insurance on that particular property, it will update my expenses. And once again, I have the convenience of loading all this information into one spot. Now, once I've completed my income statement, it's time to move on to my balance sheet. Our balance sheet is going to be accessible through our general forms list, and by double-clicking, it will take us directly to that form. So the balance sheet is a summary of the financial balances of a company. Much like the income statement, Crosslink uses information from this primary form to streamline completion of any business return. So let's begin at the top of the form where we notice we have some options. First of all, we have the option to reconcile differences in assets and liabilities to unappropriated retained earnings for the Form 1120S. In this case, we're going to select this box. And what this is going to do is ensure that our balance sheet is balanced. And in this case, if we were to enter a certain amount on cash at the beginning and at the end of the year, we'll notice that the software will automatically use the unappropriated retained earnings account in order to make sure that our assets equal our liabilities and equities at both the beginning of the year and at the end of the year. Looking back at our balance sheet, you can see the various places that we have to enter assets at the end of 2012 and at the end of 2013, or the beginning of the year versus the end of the year. We've got some miscellaneous sections. Scrolling down to liabilities, you can see roughly the same thing. And then, of course, owner's equity. Now that we've completed an income statement and a balance sheet, let's look at the form that was added automatically for us. On our income statement, we included that we had some rental income from a commercial property, and we also included an expense as well. Due to that, the software automatically loaded a Form 8825 for us, and you can see this listed in your forms tree to the left. Now, our 8825 is already going to have information that was entered on our income statement. So from here, we're simply just going to complete this by filling out the basic information about that property, also utilizing a zip code locator, utilizing our choices to make sure that the correct code is selected, and then just entering some fair rental debts. And with this, we can complete the information from that 8825, but at the same time, we're properly reporting our information here and conveniently entering information on our consolidated income statement. Now, at this point, users should add any additional forms needed for this return. Now, to add forms, either click on the Add Form button at the upper left corner or press Control a Crosslink will display the All Forms and Schedules box. Now, before selecting any forms, let's look at a series of tabs across the top of the window. The first tab, Federal, displays the appropriate forms in a numerical order with a search for locating forms quickly and efficiently. The next tab is Index. This allows users to find forms by topic instead of requiring them to know the form number or schedule. Another important tab is the State tab. Selecting the State tab will allow you to see the attached states on this return as well as any available states that can be added by using a drop-down menu to select the appropriate forms. 
The depreciation tab takes us to our asset manager for this particular company. Now at this point, we've completed our client data sheet, we've completed our income statement and balance sheet, we've addressed any forms that have either been added automatically by the software or added by us. Now we're ready to move to our 1120 and see the information. As you can see, many of these dark gray fields are already calculated and the information is here for us. And at this point, we do have some ordinary business income. And this income coming from a pass-through corporation needs to be accounted for. And we're going to do that by adding a K-1 to this return. Now, Crosslink Business utilizes a K-1 manager, which can be found in your general list of forms on the left, in order to track and keep up with all the various and state K-1s that you may have in this return. Our K-1 manager lets you display these various K-1s. It's also important to note that users have the option of displaying K-1 forms in the navigation panel. So if I were to check this box at the bottom left to do that and click on close, you can see that it adds my K-1 to the forms list to where I can access it with just a double click. Now for today's purposes, I'm going to go back into my K1 manager, uncheck this box to use this manager, and I'm going to select my first K1. So like we said earlier, our K1 is going to take the income from this business and it's going to pass it through to the owners of this particular business. So with that, I want to scroll through the K1. Notice that most of these fields are going to be calculated or self-fulfilling fields. However, I do need to enter information about this particular shareholder. In order to do so, I'll just enter a social security number, that individual's name, address, taking advantage of my zip code locator, and then I'll need to know the shareholder's percentage of stock ownership. In this case, I'm going to select one owner by denoting 100%. And once I mark that this particular entity is an individual, I can scroll up to the top and notice that the income from my 1120S is automatically brought forward. Along the same lines, the income from my 8825 for real estate income is automatically brought to this K1 as well. Now, once I have added and completed the necessary forms and prepared the K-1s, we're now ready to verify the return. This process searches for potential errors and omissions on this return before sending to the IRS. Now I can verify a return in the business software the same way you do in the 1040 software, either by using Control V on your keyboard or just pressing the toolbar at the top labeled verify. Once again, we'll look through and see anything that needs our attention before sending on. In this case, we can take advantage of one of the signature features of the Crosslink 1040 software, referred to as point and shoot error correction. We may do so by either double clicking our error or pressing enter. It'll take us directly to the field that needs attention before moving on. Now I could continue to utilize Crosslink's point and shoot error correction by answering my question and pressing enter back to my list and then to my next line that needs adjusting, so on and so forth until the return is complete. However, I want to point out another time-saving feature of Crosslink Business on our Schedule B. Our Schedule B, if we'll scroll down, includes a lot of yes-no answer questions. And if you've read through these, most of the time for smaller companies, they're going to be answered no. So we did include a checkbox to answer all of those questions no quickly and efficiently. Now, of course, we want to encourage you to still read through these and make sure that none of these do need to be answered yes for this particular business. But by doing so, I can save the time of moving through these and let's re-verify my return. And at this point, we've completed an 1120 S Corporation return. Now, before I begin to finish this return by printing our appropriate forms and transmit, it's important to point out an additional functionality of the Crosslink software. Crosslink allows preparers to utilize information entered into a return to compare tax differences that might arise from changing business entities. For example, if our S Corp was considering becoming a C Corp, we could easily present their tax return to them as a C Corp. This is as simple as clicking on the return menu and selecting change entity type. This will allow us to create a brand new return. So we're not going to make any changes or erase the return that we've just worked to complete, but we can create a new return with the same EIN, just a different type of entity, and then we can compare the differences between the two. Now that our return has been verified and our client is satisfied, it's time to print a copy for your client. To print the final return, click the print button located at the top of the screen. Now Crosslink will display the print final return window and let's look at some of our options. First of all, notice our print button here to go ahead and print the return. We can also utilize another signature feature of Crosslink 1040 and use our digital signature pad to sign our forms. 
Also, I'd like to point out how we can produce a PDF of this particular return and even encrypt it with a password. Now, once our return has been printed, the next step in completing the return is to transmit our electronically file. To begin this process, we'll simply click on Transmit at the top of the screen. We'll ensure that our appropriate packages are queued and ready to go, and we'll simply click on Send. Now this return will be sent to the IRS the next time the program transmits to Central Site. And with that, we have completed and electronically filed a business return using the Crosslink software. So as you've seen, Crosslink uses its proven functionalities to streamline business return preparation. Users can look forward to utilizing the active window, which gives detailed instructions and quick access to list, worksheets, and form links. The databases, which store information such as bank routing numbers and employer identification numbers, reducing the risk of data entry error. The signature pad, an excellent time-saving feature in Crosslink, which streamlines the signing of documents by both preparers and clients, and when used in conjunction with the document archive, can help reduce filing time and resources by storing digital copies of documents directly within the return. And bookmarks and notes, which are great tools you can use to remind yourself if items are needed to complete a return. So in closing, using an established platform like Crosslink allows users to hit the ground running concerning their business returns. Not only will the software be easy to use and easy to transition to, once users obtain and complete the basic financial statements, most of your data entry will be complete. And of course, Crosslink users can look forward to utilizing the same great time-saving, error-reducing functionalities that they're accustomed to within the Crosslink 1040 software. And last but certainly not least, the same great technical support, account management, and training teams will be there for you. That concludes today's presentation on the Crosslink 1120S software.